Faye Fernandez and I'm an art teacher. Visit my website at pattyfernandezartist.com. Okay, let's draw. Today's project is how to draw some squash and gourds. I'm going to start over here on the right hand side, put two fingers at the top, and underneath let's put a dot. From that dot I'm going to draw a slightly curved line to the left, come back to the dot, slightly curved line to the right. Come back to the left, I'm going to draw a straight diagonal down on the left, come on the right hand side, straight diagonal down on the right. Come back to the left and let's draw a slightly wavy, wavy, wavy line connect. Now this project has a lot of overlaps and it also has a lot of what I call floating lines. So some lines we're going to connect and others we're going to leave open. So starting here on the right hand side I draw a big curve line down and then a bigger curve line all the way down, over, and leave it floating. Come on the left hand side I'm going to draw a curve line down, curve line and leave that floating. Okay? Now I come right about here and I put a dot. And from that dot I'm going to draw a slightly wavy wavy line around and connect. Right above I'm going to start off with a curve line curve line to the right, curve line, bam, it crashes into this line and I'm going to leave it floating. Come back to the top, we're going to draw a curve line, curve line to the left and leave that open, we're going to leave that floating also. Okay, starting right here where I left that open, I'm going to draw a slightly curved line at the top, come back, on the left, straight diagonal down on the left, straight diagonal down on the right, slightly curved line connect. Come back to the left. I'm going to draw curve line, curve line, curve line, and stop, leave that floating. Come back up to the top and I'm going to draw a curve line out, down, and then leave that floating also all these floating lines. Okay. Now I come back over here to the right and right about here I'm going to draw another curved line. I draw a straight diagonal down on the left, straight diagonal down on the right. Slightly curved line over and connect. About midpoint right here I'm going to start drawing a wavy, 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 wavy line all the way down. Stop. Come up about midpoint again on the right. Wavy, wavy, wavy line down. Keep going. And connect. Okay? Inside, I'm going to follow this wavy, wavy line all the way down. I'm going to come right in the center and draw another wavy, wavy line down. Draw it again in the center. And one more following this outside line. Wavy, wavy, wavy line all the way down. And let's draw it one more time. Now if you get down to the bottom and you can't draw anymore, you can just stop. Okay? Now I come back in and I'm going to start right directly down from here and I'm going to draw a curve line up, curve line in, curve line out and then bam it crashes into that. Come back up, little curve line down, big curve line out, bam it crashes into that. Jump over and let's continue that line all the way down and connect. Now I can finish this line, curve line, curve line, connect. I can come back on the left and finish this line, curve line down, connect. And I can come back over here on the right and finish this line, connect. Okay? A lot of lines going a lot of different ways. Alright, 
starting back over here on the right, I'm going to add curve line in, curve line down until bam it crashes in and I stop, come back up, curve line down, curve line, bam it crashes, come back up. You're not going to draw through your lines all the way down. If you've got space, one more curve line, curve line down, connect. Now I come over to this big part right here. Starting on the bottom, I'm going to draw a curve line down. Bam, it crashes in. Don't keep drawing. Curve line down. Bam, that crashes. Don't keep drawing. And now where I have my indentations, I'm going to draw these curve lines in to the center. And if I have room like I do right here, I can draw another one out till it crashes into the other line and another one out till it crashes to another line. Okay? Now I come into this middle part and I'm just going to draw curve lines until I can no longer connect them. Ah, I think that's it. I come back and I mimic this line now. Curve line, curve line, curve line down. On the left, curve line, curve line, curve line. Bam, it crashes. One more. Curve line, curve line. Connect. Okay. Lots of curve lines. Looks a little tricky to color and that's what I will show you next. Okay, let's see how we are going to color this in. Okay, this whole entire drawing is a lot of double coloring. And what I'm going to start off with is so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to color this first gourd or squash right here. So I always color light to dark, so I'm going to start with my yellow. And I'm going to color in these wavy lines. Now the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can see what I'm coloring because otherwise it looks like a bunch of lines and I don't know what's what. So I'm going to color in my wavy wavy lines yellow and I'm going to put some yellow on the stem and then I come back with my darker color always dark to light, light to dark and I'm just going to put some brown stripes and I'm going to color the inside section of the gourd brown. Now you'll do a better job than I am, but this is just so that I can see what my gourd or squash looks like. Because otherwise they start to melt into each other. It's really kind of difficult to color them in. So this one is all brown and yellow. Okay. And the next one, I'm going to do the stem first. So this is green. Now I'm just putting straight lines of light green. Then, light to dark, I fill it in with the darker green. On this one, I've got orange and yellow orange. Start with light and I just go over the lines that I drew. If you have a black line, you're going to put a yellow orange line right next to it. And again, this is going to help you figure out which squash or which gourd you're coloring in. Then once I've done that, I come back over with my regular orange and I color this section in. Some of you will say, I don't have yellow orange. Well, if you have yellow and you have orange, you do have yellow orange. Just add yellow first. Then go over it with your orange. Okay? All right. Next one is two-toned. This one again, we're going to start with yellow and just draw the lines. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's the easiest thing to do. Is it on each gourd or each squash, just trace over the lines you've already drawn. So I'm just doing it light to dark. I'm going to start off with my yellow. And then half of this is going to be green, so I'm going to color half of it green, the bottom half. Gourds come in all kinds of color configurations. So I'm going to color the bottom part green, 
and then I'm going to finish the top part with my orange. Now going over the yellow is going to kind of be two-toned, triple-toned. So you can see how the colors kind of melting into each other. And this is one of those projects where if the green runs into the orange, that's great. That's fine because it's nature. Okay. Now, on my next gourd, light to dark, I'm going to start with yellow and do the stem. Straight lines, straight lines. Trace around my black lines that I've already drawn with my yellow to get that first color down. Okay. Then I'm going to make this one brown. But I'm going to add straight lines of brown. I'm not going to color it all in solid brown. I'm just going to go over my yellow with a brown line. Both sides, the inside and the outside. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of light green. Now, you can Google squashes, images, and you will see there's just a whole bunch of different color configurations that make up squashes and gourds. You can come back in and add a little bit of brown, even out your color. Okay? Then this big guy in the back, I'm going to use, start off with my light green. Again, just go over my lines that I've already drawn. Okay, that makes it easy. Just know that that's what you're doing. You're just going to automatically trace next to, on top of, or by, your greens and your, with your black line as your guide. Then, come back in and do it again with the darker green. If you have a darker green, go around all the lines you just did. And this is going to give you kind of a two-toned color. And once you've done that, go back to your light green and color over all of the above. Okay? Now, you can look at pictures of gourds and find different color combinations than what I'm using, which is fine go for it because there are a lot of choices to make. Now once I've colored in my greens I'm going to take my brown, that's the darkest, and I'm just going to do some brown lines for shading. Not a lot around the edges of this big guy. Okay? And don't forget the stem. All right. That's a lot. Take your time. Take it slow. Always remember light to dark. Start with your lightest color first, then go back to your dark. Okay, let's see how this looks like all colored in. Okay, here are my squash and gourds all colored in. Double colored, triple colored, light to dark, blended nicely. All set for fall or possibly Thanksgiving. You might want to cut this out and mount it on black or brown, dark brown paper. That would look really cool. Okay, bye-bye.